<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Zoo to You. My name is Melanie. I am one of the educators here at Franklin Park Zoo. And today we are with our Bactrian camel, Xander, and Brittany, our keeper who also does training with Xander. So they're going to show us a few of the behaviors that, that they train on. Um, we are going back to school recently, so now our animals are also going back to school. Right now you can see Brittany has a big pole in her hand. We call that a target pole. So what that does is that allows her to have Xander move around in different areas. Um, he did just try to bite it a little bit, but typically we will ask the animal to touch their nose or a part of them to that target. Um, that allows Brittany to get him to move to different areas when it's necessary. Right now she is asking him to back up just a little bit. Here at Franklin Park Zoo, when we do training, we do something called positive reinforcement training. And what that means is that when we request a behavior from an animal, when they exhibit that behavior, we reward them. You can see Brittany has those tongs there and she is giving some tasty little treats to Xander for doing what she is asking him to do. Those are alfalfa cubes, which are a special treat for our camels. They get them only during training. So right now you can see Brittany was kind of poking Xander in his shoulder a little bit. That is a beginning um, behavior for training for injections. We want all of our animals to be comfortable participating voluntarily in their own health care. Because not only does it make it easier and less stressful for our keepers, it makes it less stressful for the animals as well. So what Brittany has in her hand right now is a syringe. So what she'll start doing is she'll start poking the cap syringe into his shoulder to simulate what it would be like to get that injection. And Xander was nice and calm, didn't back away, didn't get scared or anything. So now he's getting rewarded for being calm and accepting that syringe in his shoulder. Now Brittany's taking the cap off. So once we've done that dull, dull tap, we're going to do a little bit more of a pointy tap to simulate what the injection will really feel like when it's a real injection. Oh, see, he's doing really well. This is something that they have been working on with our camels for a very long time. Injection training is important for all of our animals because many of our animals need to get different types of vaccinations. Right now we're focused on vaccinations with our camels because they're a COVID sensitive species and they are coming up on time to get their COVID boosters. So we're just reinforcing this behavior that's been trained to make sure that when they do have to get those real shots from the vets, they're gonna be calm and they're gonna be comfortable and allow the vets to give them their vaccines without any concerns. Now I'd like to also point out if anyone happened to notice, there is a big blue Frisbee up on the fence right now. That is something that we call a station. There are a lot of different animals that have a lot of different stations, but for our camels, Brittany can clap that or clip that up onto the fence and Xander knows that that is where he is supposed to stand. It looks like right now, Brittany is now going over to Xander's back hip. There are a few different locations in which our camels can get injections. Injections can be given in different areas depending on the animal, but for our camels, we usually either do the shoulder or the back hip. And one other thing that they're being trained on now is um, another type of injection that does not go into the muscle. It actually goes underneath the skin. It's called subcutaneous. And they'll do that kind of in like the fleshy part of his armpit. So not only do we need to train the animals to accept those different types of poking things in their body for the different types of vaccines, but we also need to get them to accept them in different locations on their bodies. So you'll see right now, Brittany is using a very, very thick stick. 
This would be a very beginning point that we're using something very round, not small and pointy at all, just to get him used to feeling something, touching his body in that space. This giant fence that we have up between Brittany and Xander is for both our keeper safety and our animal safety. Such a large animal, we don't want to be inside with them because they could potentially injure us. Xander weighs about 2,000 pounds, so even if he just stepped on a toe, he could hurt a whole lot. So these little sticks allow our keepers to get the animals close to the fence and touching their bodies and getting them used to different sensations that they will need for when the veterinarians come to do procedures on them, like give injections. <laughs> yeah, questions? Yeah. So I'm going to pause right here and I wanted to know if anyone has any questions, you can pop those into uh, the little chat box and we'd be happy to answer any of those for you. Or you can just watch Xander eat through a fence, which is also quite entertaining. <laughs> Shoulder. You can see now Brittany is actually touching him with her hand. She's getting him a little bit acclimated to that, that fleshy part underneath his uh, sort of his armpit area that I had mentioned where she will actually, um, for a subcutaneous injection, you will actually have to kind of pinch the skin and pull it away from the body a tiny, tiny bit. So it's a little bit different than just the injection going straight into the body. Francis wants to know how old he or she is. Xander just turned six, uh, I think it was May. Yes. So he's still kind of on the young side. Um, these animals can live, uh, the, I think the medium life, median lifespan is about 18 to 20 years old. So, <laughs> great job, Xander. You have any other questions coming in? No? It's fine. Sometimes it's fun just to watch the animal. <laughs> you can see Brittany is kind of was kind of squeezing his skin a little bit to get him used to that, what we call tenting, where she has to pull the skin away from the body slightly. How long has he been here? Xander, um, someone had just asked how long Xander has been here. Xander came here when he was about two years old. So he's been here for about four years. And so Brittany is now showing him the uh, elongated tube that would be used for a subcutaneous injection. So he sees what is happening and he's ready for it to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everyone could hear that. Brittany does um, warn Xander in advance that she is going to touch him so that he's not surprised when he feels her hand there. Um, their eyes are kind of set in a way where they, unless they turn their head, they're not going to be able to see that hand reaching out to touch them. So we like to warn them in advance so that they're not surprised when it happens. Xander is loving his little alfalfa treats, as he always does. <laughs> He's doing a great job staying nice and calm. As I mentioned earlier, our camels did get COVID vaccines. So this won't be the first time that they're getting an injection, but we do like to do something called maintenance on behaviors that they have learned, just to ensure that something that's uncommon, like those vaccines that might happen only once every six months or a year, um, that they're going to maintain that calm behavior when they have to get another one. What 
kind of treats he gets. Well, like I said earlier, he's getting some alfalfa cubes right now. So alfalfa is not the typical kind of hay that they get in their daily diet. Alfalfa uh, has a very different taste to it. So they only get it as a special treat and it's kind of squished into these really compact little cubes. Their normal diet consists mostly, mostly of a type of hay called Timothy. And they also get grain and something called beet pulp on a daily basis. Um, they've also been able to have things like carrots um, for tra training treats as well. alfalfa cubes. Do we have any other questions? Let me explain what Brittany is doing right now. This, this arm motion that she's making is something that the camels have been um, taught to learn means to move backwards. So the target doesn't usually work in getting them to walk backwards because they will go towards the target. So if we want them to move in the opposite direction, we need some other form of motion to get them to understand the direction is opposite of what they were, would do with the target pole. <laughs> so maybe a little bit hard to hear, but when Brittany is doing these different things with Xander, she typically will have two different cues. She'll have a verbal cue where she'll say a specific word or phrase, but she'll usually also have either, you know, something physical like the target pull, or she'll have um, that arm motion that if he can't hear her, he can also see what she is asking him to do. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? We're filming right now. So. You can see Xander is kind of backing up a little bit, but now he is reaching for that target pole. As you can expect, if you've ever tried to train a dog or anything like that, this is entirely voluntary. So Xander makes up his own mind if he wants to participate and what he wants to do when he is participating, uh, which is why training is so important for our animals, that we continuously reinforce these behaviors so that when it is important, like uh, the veterinary visit if they're getting their shots or something that they're most likely to comply and be nice and calm when that is happening. <laughs> he doesn't doesn't want to back up just now. <laughs> oh. Good boy. So there is that station behavior again. We don't have that little blue um, frisbee on the fence, but Xander does know that the word station means to stand still in a certain spot. <laughs> As you can see, Brittany has now gotten Xander to walk towards her and then turn around so that she can see his other side. Um, that's something that you can use um, for the injections um, as well as just looking at their general body condition, making sure that we're getting a good look at both sides of them up close to make sure that, you know, there's no injuries, there's nothing um, concerning that we need to look at them for or have the vets come to check on them for. So with large animals like this that we cannot go in with, it's very important that they're willing to move around in the way that we would like them to because healthcare isn't just things like getting those injections or taking medications. We do need to do um, visual inspections of the animals on a consistent basis to make sure that we don't see anything that we need to check in on. All right, well, if we don't have any more questions, I'd like to thank Xander and Brittany for being with us today and showing us all of the wonderful things they're working on. And thank you for joining us again.